As we observe these last few days of 2021, I always look back, not just at this last year, but the ones that preceded it too. And I think, and I plan, and I dream about 2022, and the things that I hope to learn and accomplish. Because I've been a self-employed, full-time professional photographer since 1992 when I left my last newspaper, I am the marketing department. I am the CIO, the CFO, and the CEO of, well, myself. So each new year, I try to challenge myself with a big thing, something that I knew I should do, but I hadn't gotten around to it yet. You know how you give sometimes great advice to people that you don't actually take yourself like that? Back in October of 2020, I did a video saying that I had a goal of getting completely away from Adobe software and their pay per month scheme. I had added up all the monthly fees that I had paid them when they started the subscription service back in 2008. And it shocked me that I had spent $6,400 in that time. I gave myself three months from October to January to move entirely away from Adobe. I bought Affinity Photo for $27, and that wasn't a month, that was a one-time cost. Now technically it's 55 bucks right now, but sometimes it goes on sale. Final Cut Pro sent me back $300, one time, then I bought Capture One, and then I did the unthinkable. I deleted everything Adobe on my computer. Now, I have to be honest, I was terrified, mortified, and severely addicted to Adobe. I had so long been using all their titles that I wasn't sure I could really do this thing. Then I started with Affinity Photo on my big monitor and with YouTube instructional videos on a smaller one. And in just one hour's time, I learned how to do most of everything I had used every day in Photoshop since 1993. I made a few notes and stuck them on my desk and kept going. Next, I purchased an iTunes cards, three of them. They sometimes go on sale at Target for 5% off. I ended up paying just $284 for Final Cut Pro. If learning the basics of editing an Affinity Photo was easy, and it was, I actually found Final Cut Pro to be easier still. The magnetic timeline in Final Cut is awesome and it makes editing super easy. I realized two things in the first couple hours of editing in Final Cut. Number one, that it was taking much less time to render and export. And number two, that because of the way you can scrub through clips before you set your ins and outs, I was editing about twice as fast as I ever did in Adobe's Premiere Pro. Last, I had an older copy of Capture One that was given to me at Sony's condo event a few years ago. I opened up the hood on that and upgraded the version that I had and started learning with the constant help of strangers on YouTube. And I want to be honest, I don't use the library that it, it makes you, it forces you into, and it took me a while to figure out a workaround for that. Once I could ingest, edit, and export the variant files, which is their term for edited files, I could put them where I wanted to on a big Drobo in my office. I quickly really realized that Capture One was much, much better than Lightroom. I never looked back. So it's been 15 months now since I deleted all my Adobe applications. Financially, after paying outright for Affinity Photo, Final Cut Pro, and Capture One, I have paid out a total of $590, which included one upgrade that I decided to do with Capture One. If I'd stayed with Adobe, I would have paid out $1,110 in the same amount of time. And here's the cool thing. <laughs> in 2022, I project that I will probably spend about 80 bucks. And it will probably be an upgrade to Capture One if I choose to do it, and only if I choose to. If I don't, I'll save $900 this year by not paying Adobe every month for software that is frankly not as good as what I'm using now and costs far less. I'm happy that the Adobe track marks in my arms have completely faded now, and I'm sleeping better than ever, now that my unhealthy addiction is behind me. Learning new tricks gets more difficult as we grow older. We get set in our ways, complacent even, and we settle for good enough. But this is not the way forward. This video is not really about Adobe or software editing images and video. I wanted to do something to encourage my many visual friends out there that perhaps I could be a catalyst for some kind of needed change that you need to make in your business in 2022. 
Certainly tons of people I don't even know and have never met helped me last year as I transitioned away from Adobe and into greener pastures. Whatever change you need to make, I'm here to tell you, you can do this. For me, the decision to leave Adobe was harder than actually learning the three new applications. Within just 15 days and not three months, I was working well in all three new titles. 60 days after I switched, I was actually comfortable in all of them. So I want to encourage you to think hard about how you need to be you in 2022. I'm hoping my story might light a fire in some area of your creative work and mindset. We will always benefit from stretching and growing our skill set as we set our collective jaws and face the new year together. If your work as a pro photographer or if you work in creative production, you know that these last two years have been extremely challenging and difficult. So in these last few days of 2021 and the early days of the new year, take some time to think and reflect on what your next move should be. And remember, the change is good. You do you in 22. Peace to you and your families. And Happy New Year.